Hello, welcome to another video by Moxon Marine. In this video, I'm going to be uh, building a 5.7 liter V8. I believe this has been bored to a 40 thousandths oversize. And um, this block is um, just now been cleaned. I uh, cleaned it with shout uh, degreaser, uh, basically closed uh, degreaser. And uh, I washed it with shout and water. And then um, first thing I do when I bring it back in, you can see it's got a little bit of flash rust on the side. That's about not hurt anything. The main thing I do is wipe the bores down with a rag, uh, blue shop cloth first to get them dry before they rust. And then everything else, I just blow dry. And uh, the, the blow dry does leave a little flash rust, but like I said, it won't hurt anything. So this block has been cleaned and ready to build. And uh, I'm going to try to document everything I can in this build just so you'll have a, a, a build uh, straight from start to finish. Uh, a lot of my videos are partial videos of partial builds, but I'm going to try to do this one as uh, complete as I can get it. So the first thing I do is I inspect the block for the cores. So I got a core plug here, core plug there, core plug over here, core plug over there. By the way, these plugs were put in by the machine shop. They put in a drain plug here and a drain plug there. I'll be taking those back out because marine engines use a uh, plastic, mer cruisers anyway. This is going to be a mer cruiser, by the way. Um, they use a uh, plastic drain plug with a special fitting so you can quick quickly drain it. Um, so you want to also check on your front. You want to make sure your oil gallery plugs are in here, here, and here. Um, and uh, they've, the machine shop puts all these plugs in. They also put in the cam bearings for me. They put in cam bearing there and uh, the other five in the in the block. Um, I usually let them do that because it's um, I charge the customer the same amount as if they do it, so I just let them do it. Um, so you also got a core plug here in the front, another core plug over here in the front. And then in the back, you've got core plugs. You got one down there, you got another one over there, and you got three more oil galley plugs there, there, and there. I think the back ones are threaded, and uh, you wanna make sure they put those in. And then, of course, you got your cam plug here for the back, that's the end. And then the, the most important thing I always look for is if you look down in this hole right here, you wanna make sure there's a plug in there. I had another video of this before, but that basically is your uh, plug that makes the oil go to your oil filter and then goes through the oil filter and comes back in your engine. If you don't put that plug in, oil goes straight through and bypasses the filter, you get no filter at all. So it's very important you make sure that's in. So um, so anyway, the, the block is uh, cleaned up and ready, to, uh, ready for the bearings. And I'm going to start putting the uh, crankshaft bearings in and laying the crankshaft in. Okay, I'm now putting the main bearings in this uh, 5.7 block, Mercruiser block. And uh, one of the first things I do uh, before I uh, install the bearings is I check to make sure they're the right size. So that says uh, 0 0.010. So this is the right size. These bearings are a uh, 10 thousandths undersized or oversized bearing. And um, these are uh, male, let's see, what's the box number? It is, this is the box number. It's uh, MS909P. These are the tri-metal uh, bearings made in Brazil. Hmm. And these are, that dash 10 means they're 10 thousandths undersized or oversized. Depending on how you want to put it. The crank's undersized, the uh, bearings are oversized. So um, once I decide, or I've already checked these first three to make sure they're the right size. I'll just check this one, it's 10 over, that's good. And then the first, next thing we'll do is wipe them off, take a, a fresh clean rag and wipe the bearings both inside and outside off because it has some uh, manufacturing dust and manufacturing lubricant on, lubricant on there you want to get off. So I'm now about to install bearing number four, and then I'll put bearing number five in. Bearing number five is the thrust bearing, special type and size, and it goes in the last spot here. And then once I get all the bearings in, um, I'll uh, clean the crank, and then I'll lay the crank in place and uh, get it bolted in. Okay, and now I have all the bearing shells. These are called the upper shells because the block's upside down. These are the upper halves. The upper halves have a groove. The lower halves don't have a groove. So I've now got all the uh, upper halves in and all the uh, saddles and um, now about to uh, put the crankshaft in. So the crankshaft was pretty clean. Um, it was wrapped in a plastic bag from the machine shop. And typically I will wash them with soap and water, but in this case, it looks so clean, I decided to just uh, blow it off with an air, air hose and then use a rag to wipe down the journals. And then I think it's clean enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the crank in, in the uh, block. But before I do that, I have to put uh, oil on all the bearings before I lay this crank in place. Okay, I now have the crankshaft installed and um, it's laid in place and um, I'm about to put the main bearing caps on and uh, torque them down. And um, one thing I forgot to point out at the start of this video is um, this is what's known as a four bolt block, four bolt main block. So you got two bolt holes here, two on that side, 
and the, the this one the number two three and four have four bolts per cap instead of two number one still has two bolts nothing in the back says two bolts but this is known as a, a four bolt main block and they're very uh they're highly sought after among uh, racers um they're supposed to be a a, a more uh, a stronger block for uh, building a race car but uh so this customer got lucky when he purchased this engine as a core it, it turned out to be a four bolt main block it's an 880 block which is supposed to mean vortex um i'm not sure because this bolt pattern for the front timing cover looks to me to be the old stamped steel type bolt pattern, but I'm not sure. I'll have to get the cover and check the fence, see if, see if that's true or not. I'll also be replacing, this is the gear that came off the uh, core engine. I'll be pulling this gear off and putting on a uh, what's called a roller chain, um, you know, timing chain instead of that. This is known as the, uh, uh, I think it's a quiet chain, more like a link chain, but uh, I don't like them. I use the roller chains instead. I use what Mercruiser used on their engines, which is a the three eight inch wide roller roller cam roller uh, belt excuse me timing chain it's kind of late um so anyway i'm about to uh, put the caps on torque it down and uh, so what i'm doing is i'm going to put all the main caps on torque it down and then see if it spent of course i'm gonna put oil in, um, on the other bearings too i've got oil in the upper bearings when i put the uh, bearing, main bearing caps on i'll be oil in the uh, lower half of the bearings also um, once i get all the bearings torqued or all the uh, main caps torqued I'll see if the crankshaft spins. It should spin freely. Um, these are these crankshafts have been this crankshaft has been turned down ten thousandths on the crank, and um, it should spin free right off the bat. It, so if it doesn't, and I've got a, a bearing that's binding up, well, I'll, when I take it back apart, I will see where it's binding because it'll make a mark on the new bearing. The new bearing will have like a shiny spot where it's rubbing if it's if it's uh, sticking. And so that's a real quick way of determining whether your crank's going to work or not. Um, there's no point going to doing a lot of measuring and measuring uh, clearances and all that if the, if the crank doesn't spin once you get it installed. So I'm going to get the the, uh, the uh, most important part out of the way to make sure it spins, and then I go back and check my clearances. Okay, so one of the biggest uh, nightmares I run into when I build an engine is uh, if the main main bearing camps weren't numbered before they're taken off, or, or um, they weren't numbered with the main at the factory. So. I just pulled this uh, main pairing cap. So this is obviously one, it's, in, it's number two, three, or four, because it's definitely not one, because they don't have two, bolt, two bolts there, two bolts on the last one. So it's, it's gotta be number two, three, or four. But looking at this mark, I can't tell if that's a three or a two. I know it's, it's probably not a four, but I can't tell if it's a two or a three, just from looking at that. Um, maybe it's, I see a faint, maybe that's the bottom of the three, uh, kind of hard to tell. So I wasn't really sure about that. So what I did is I put that aside and I looked for the other two. And uh, that's definitely a four. So I definitely make out a four on that one. And then this one over here is pretty sure that's a two. I see a two there. So yeah, there's two. So that this other mark, is, it, it is a three. Um, that's what I suspected, but I wasn't sure. So um, now that I have two, three, and four identified, I can go ahead and finish putting it together. But um, like I say, you, you need, when you disassemble a motor, you need to, you don't have to put a number on them, but you can put like a, well, a lot of times I'll put, um, say, a dot on number one, two dots on number two, and then if it's a V6, it'll only have four main caps. It'll have one, two, three, and four. So a dot on one, two dots on two, I'll leave three blank because it's obvious it's, it's only one left. And then four is, is like this back one. It's a, it's unique to the engine. So um, on a, on a, uh, on the five on a V8 like this one, I'd put probably one dot here, two dots here, three dots here, and then leave four and five blank uh, if I had to do it. So uh, you could take a tip of a screwdriver, a flat blade screwdriver, and just little like little notches to help you uh, number your caps. But do that before you take it off because once you take them off and get them mixed up, you won't figure it, you. It's you can figure out how to get them back on there, but it's it's much easier to just go ahead and uh, number them before you take it apart. All right, um, let me go in. And by the way, to, to figure it out, if you do mess them up, mess them up and can't figure it out, you have to look at the machining. You ha you take the bearings out and you look at the machining of each um, of each in the block of the saddle and the main bearing cap and try to match machining marks to try to match it back up. Plus, you can feel if there's a little ridge where your fingernail, when you put them on there, if you feel a ridge on there, it's probably not the right cap for that particular spot. Hopefully you don't mix them up with another engine. If you mix them with another engine, I, you know, I really can't help you there. But um, anyway, 
I'm going to put these caps on and get this thing wrapped up. Okay, the crank is now installed and all the uh, main caps are tightened so that this, since it's a four bolt main, I had to look up the torque uh, for this, uh, for these caps. So the, these are 75 foot pounds. The inner bolts are 75 foot pounds all the way down and the outer bolts were 65 foot pounds. The outer on the, uh, th on these three here. So the crank's in and uh, we've got a minor problem. It's not spinning. It spins okay. I mean, it spins, but it's not freewheeling. So if I, if I grab this uh, counterweight right here and spin it like that, it should spin five, six times and, and then stop. So it's, it's binding just a little bit. It's spinning, but it's binding just a little bit somewhere. So uh, it was spinning pretty free up until I put on this bo this bearing and this one. So I'm going to back this one back off, take it off, um, loose it back up, pull it off, and see if it spins free. And that will be uh, that'll help me identify which one's binding up. But um, I'm going to go ahead and pull them all back off anyway. I've got a, a method where I'm going to try to figure out the clearance, but I need to figure out which one of these bearings is binding up first. And sometimes all you have to do is swap the bearing. So these up bearings are all 10 under, uh, 10 thousandths. Uh, yeah, 10, is it 10 thousandths or 10, uh, no, it's uh, 10 hundredths, no, 10 thousandths, excuse me. Yeah, 10 thousandths undersize, and um, sometimes just maybe the bearing's got a manufacturing fail. I'll swap with another one that's also 10 under and see if it fixes the problem. Um, plus, by taking them off, I'll see where the, for the uh, shiny spots are. That The shiny spots on the bearings, and that tells you where it's binding up. So I'll probably just swap one of these bearings out for another one and see if that helps fix it. Okay. At the end of the last video, I had a crankshaft that was a little bit uh, stubborn to roll or rotate, and uh, I've since uh, figured out what's wrong. So I went ahead and took all the uh, bearing caps back off and inspected the bearings. And number two, which is the second one here, that's one, that's two. Number two bearing looked like this. This is the uh, lower half of the bearing, so it was in the uh, cap here. And you see there's some, uh, I won't, that's not scoring, but that's some... Uh, uh, high spots or some spots where the crank was actually rubbing on the bearing a little bit tight. And so that told me that number two bearing is where my uh, problem was as far as it not wanting to spin very well. So uh, being a uh, shop that has uh, multiple engines going on, um, what I do is I do have a lot of 4.3s come through my shop, V6s. And uh, as I point out in other videos, I buy V8 bearing kits for my V6s. I do that for two reasons. One, uh, the V8 kit is cheaper by a few dollars usually. Uh, not really sure why, but um, the V8 kit's cheaper, and I get one extra bearing pair, like this this uh, lower and the upper bearing pair, because a V8 has five. There's one, two, three, four, and five, and a V6 only has four. So with a V8 kit, you get one extra bearing, and on a V6, you have a bearing left over, a bearing pair left over. So in this case, this V8, I bought a, a set of bearings. I had just the right number of bearings, but I have leftover bearings from other bills that I use for um, in this situation. So I happen to have an extra spare 010 bearing, and I put in number two, and problem solved. So this, this crank rotates a whole lot freer now. You can see that it's rotating. There's oil in there, so it's got a little bit of viscosity from the oil, but it's rotating a whole lot smoother. It's not hanging up like it was. You can see if I if I like if I spin it, you watch sometimes it'll keep on rolling. It'll almost settle in. Let's see if I do it again. Yeah, right there. You see it back up. So it rolled to there and then it backed up on its own. That's a sign it's not hanging up. So this crankshaft is now spinning very freely now. So crankshaft's in. Um, and by the way, I've already uh, rechecked all the clearances. All of them were under point zero or two uh, two point five thousandths. So all the bearing clearances are good. I checked on plastic gauge and uh, I didn't do that on camera because I was uh, running low on battery in time. But the crankshaft's now in and I'm now installing the, uh, the cam. And uh, normally I try to put the cam in before I put the crank in. Um, but in this case, I, the cam wasn't clean, so I just went and did the, the crank first. So I installed the camshaft with the uh, retainer plate and uh, torqued these two nuts to uh, 106 inch pounds. And now I'm about to install the timing set and uh, time it, and uh, that's pretty simple to do. Um, you just line up dots on the gears so the dots are closest to each other and lined up in, in, along the center line of the crank and the cam and you're done. Okay, I'm now putting the uh, timing chain on, or also called the timing set. It comes with uh, this gear, that gear, and the chain, and uh, the part number is, um, I believe, 3202SA. I will confirm that, and if I'm wrong, I'll put it in the description. But um, 
Anyway, you get these three parts, and it's interesting that one of them says General Motors on it. So that's the General Motors part number. Uh, that's the, the big gear, the cam gear, is General Motors. It's got the General Motors part number, 125, 125.52129. So that's a, it's a weird that that come in a melling kit, but it's uh, this is a melling set, and it came in a melling kit, but it's a General Motors part number. So um, I'm about to put, so I've got it timed. You see the dot there and the dot there lined up with the center line of the crankshaft and the camshaft. So that's how you time it. And then I'm about to put the three bolts in the cam to hold it all together. And uh, one thing I've been doing a lot lately is use this product called uh, Threadlocker Orange. It's a new product from Loctite or Permatex. And um, it's in between blue and red. Red is uh, permanent. You can't break it loose without tools and heat um, or without a lot of heat. The orange is supposed to be stronger than blue, but you still break it loose with just hand tools with no heat. So I've been using orange uh, in, in my bills lately because um, I want the strongest thread locker I can get, but not too strong. So um, every bolt I'll use now, I'll put orange thread locker on it, um, which I'll do right here on this cam also. So let me go ahead and tighten this cam up and the cam will be installed and then uh, it's ready for pistons.